My eyes searched the room, and to my absolute horror, there was someone standing at my doorway. A dark and tall silhouette. It was just watching me. I was internally screaming. My eyes closed and I started breathing as loud as I could. This happened in college, mid-80s. My best friend, who was not yet my roommate and I, got around to playing with a homemade Ouija board. Dee and I made it out of basic notebook paper, with a straw as a planchette. Broke college days, such fun. We got in touch with two spirits who claimed to be from World War II, Jonathan and Wade. Being the dumb college kids we were, we begged them to send us a sign. They didn't want to, said it would cost a lot of energy and might open a door to other less good spirits. No, no, we said, send us a sign. We log off, go to sleep, wake up, go out, run errands, return to the dorm room, message light is blinking on our now antique answering machine. Scroll through, one message in the middle is, Wade loves Katie. We knew no Wades. No one in Dee's family, or in my family, is named Wade. We had no friends, professors, fellow students named Wade. And so we proceeded to freak right out. Replayed it. Kept freaking out. Oh my god. This must be the sign. We then had the bright idea to bring over our best male buddy and let him hear it. He lived across the way in the boys' dorm. Dee and I run downstairs. She runs and gets Jay. We run back upstairs. Message light still blinking. We go to play the messages and... That particular message in the middle is gone. Never came back. Q more freaking out. Cue a stern warning from Jay about messing with Ouija boards. Dee and I kept doing it, but I noticed my hands going cold all the way up to my elbows. I felt drained, no energy. Then, one weekend, my roommate went home. I went out, returned home around dusk, walked in, and the dorm was freezing cold in May in the deep south I walked in and saw at the window a giant hand that knocked three times through the glass we lived on the third floor I took one giant step back said nothing thought nothing turned off the light locked the door and ran down to Dee's dorm room. Q more freaking out. I told Dee I'm spending the night here, even if I have to sleep on the floor. We relaxed. Then I suddenly realized, crap, I need my contact solution and clients. We have to go back. Dee said give it an hour or two more. So we did. We went back in, and the room was completely normal. No heaviness, no freezing temperatures. Dee and I ripped up the homemade Ouija board, clipped the straw planchette into pieces, and never did it again. I know what I saw. I saw a giant hand knocking on my window, through the glass. It moved the window blinds on the inside, 
and we lived on the third floor. Something wanted in. Never again. My mum and my Aunt Lucy used one. It told my mum that my dad cheated on her with a prostitute in MX, that she would never finish school because she would start working, and that she would have a son. She had three girls at this point. She literally walked into the room where my dad was, and he confirmed that yes, he'd messed around. And no, she didn't finish school. She is still working to this day. And she had my brother. It told my Aunt Lucy the date her husband's grandmother died. My mum and uncle's grandmother who died years before this experience. And it was confirmed by my mum and uncle who were standing right next to her. It also told my Aunt Lucy that she would have a daughter. She had two boys. And that she would be named Christina. Not her real name. And that it was their, the spirit, mother's name. Years pass, and my Aunt Lucy is pregnant with a girl. They chose a godfather for her, and he agrees on the condition that he could name her. He named her Christina. Mind you, the uncle that became godfather had never ever heard of this story, and my Aunt Lucy was too afraid to name her daughter based on her experience, and I think she was so scared she blocked that memory. We brought it up a few days ago, and she was tight-lipped, which, if you knew my Aunt Lucy in real life, she is the loudest person ever. So, no. Ouija boards are not nonsense. Do not play with them. At all. My mum and Aunt Lucy never heard of the Ouija prior to this. They grew up very sheltered and ignorant, but learned the rules very quickly that day from another aunt and some neighbours. You play with strangers and ask the Ouija for permission to play. Nobody but the people my dad went to MX with knew what he did. It named all the people he went with, none of which were my Aunt Lucy. He went with his friends and a brother. My Aunt Lucy was very shaken up and doesn't like talking about this experience at all. And, regards to my other uncle naming my cousin Christina, that's just how it ended up going. My uncle Thomas said, if I'm godparent, I want to name her. And that's how it happened. Oh, another thing I remembered. My Aunt Lucy asked three times for permission, and the Ouija kept telling her no. She asked why, and it said, because you're afraid. She was very much afraid to play. I did the Ouija board for the first time ever when I was 13 years old. I did it with my cousin. We sat in my dark bedroom and started asking random questions. Nothing happened and we gave up, watched a bit of TV and eventually went to bed. That night... I experienced sleep paralysis for the first time ever. It terrified me. I had no idea what was happening. I felt awake. I literally looked around my room and saw my cousin sleeping next to me and all. But I could not move. I was frozen in place. I couldn't speak either. All I could do was look around my dark room, breathe heavy, and hear the things around me. That's when the noises started. I started hearing laughter in my room, like a mocking type of laugh. My heart was going out of control at this point. That's when a voice started calling my name in like a teasing way. Then the voices were replaced by this train-like noise getting louder and louder. Then suddenly, all the noises and sounds just came to a stop. My eyes searched the room, and to my absolute horror, 
There was someone standing at my doorway. A dark and tall silhouette. It was just watching me. I was internally screaming. My eyes closed and I started breathing as loud as I could. Eventually, my cousin woke next to me and shook me, causing me to snap out of the paralysis. I screamed out for my dad. <laughs> I know, what a baby. And he rushed in. I insisted someone was in the house. The dark tall silhouette I saw. I freaked the poor guy out. He ran all over the house checking closets and rooms and the garage. But there was nothing there. I was shaking, telling them about what happened. My parents just looked at each other, obviously creeped out, and told me to say a prayer and to go to bed with nice thoughts. <sighs> I know. Well, little did I know that I had just experienced the first of many sleep paralysis incidents. I'm 33 now and still experience some of these incidents. They are freaky as hell, but over the years, I've learned how to deal with it. But, the question is, did the Ouija board have something to do with this? Did it open up some kind of channel? Or is it just a weird coincidence? <laughs>